10 months ago, I upgraded to a new motorcycle in Jakarta as I prepared for a solo journey through all the provinces in Kalimantan. I rode through dirt roads, rocky roads, floodings, the rain season, I overcame obstacles, and I ended up spending a surprising amount of time on speedboats, ferries, bamboo rafts, and jet skis. I met a lot of interesting animals in the jungles and underneath the surface. I even ate some questionable animals, and I tried a lot of homemade alcohol. I hiked to places I could previously only have imagined in my wildest dreams. I got to spend a lot of time with the incredible Dayak tribes. And most importantly, I met thousands of kind and helpful Indonesian people along my way. So without any spoilers, let's get into the last episode of the Kalimantan series. Selama pagi guys, it is another beautiful morning here in Indonesia and this morning I am down to change the oil on Machan because we will be continuing the tour tomorrow here from Brau and go into the 12th province on this channel, North Kalimantan. So we have to make sure that Machan is 100% ready, that's why I'm changing to the Fuchs Silcoline Pro 4 10W50 because with this oil I'll get an 11% fuel saving, it'll give me a 3% increase in power and this product actually consumes 18% less oil. So it's a really good choice if you're using a big bike. It is just now coming to the Indonesian market. So make sure you check it out. It's a very exclusive product. But as I always say, if you take great care of your motorcycle, it will take great care of you. And for that, we need the best. Selamat pagi guys, it's another beautiful morning here in East Kalimantan and this morning Machen and I will be leaving Berau after a fantastic stay on Maratua and we will be heading into our 12th province here in Indonesia, Kalimantan Utara aka North Kalimantan. So let's get back on the road, hopefully the weather will be with us today and yeah, let's see how it goes. <laughs> Are you ready Machen? Let's get to it! All right, guys, we are ready. Let's get back on the road. Hi, Martin. Hi. <laughs> Good to see you. What are you doing here? Oh, we have two days off, so we put some shopping and. Ah, okay. Okay. Hi, Miska. Hi. <laughs> Fun to meet you here. Uh, nice bike, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, this one you didn't get to see. I didn't bring it to Maratua, but this is. Uh, this is how I travel most of the time. That's good. Today I'm only driving three hours uh, because I just uploaded a new video yesterday and I've spent 14 days inside a room here editing it. So uh, yeah, I am so tired. I just need some fresh air and uh, yeah. I've actually stayed here so many days. So I was like, ah, I should just have gone back to Maratua and edit from Maratua. <laughs> so much more nice. <laughs> good to see you guys. Take care, yeah? Oh, that was fun to see Martin and Friska again, my friends from Maratua. <laughs> oh, and it is good to be back. <laughs> it is just a different ride once you've changed your oil. Martin is ready to rock and roll. I do have to be slightly careful today because actually last week I changed the rear tire on Machan to what's called the Metzler Taru 4. It's like a 50% off-road tire, 50% touring tire because my rear tire had punctured. So uh, yeah, the first 100 kilometers on a new tire you always want to drive a bit extra safe until it's worn in because otherwise you do risk slipping out. And we don't want to crash today. Ah, uh, yeah. So sometimes I make these stops along the way, and a car stops by, and it is actually one of my subscribers, Arif from uh, Tanjung Silawar, where I'm heading today. So he was going to Brau, where I just came from. <laughs> and when he pulled up, he immediately jumped out of his car, and I could just hear him say, Foto, foto! <laughs> and I knew what was gonna happen. The kids of the local papaya farmer then stopped by to say hello. 
and they brought an unusual pet that I had never seen before, called a tree shrew. Tu tupai, tupai ya. These small animals called tupai, and ini namanya Bobby ya. Dan ini Sherry. Oh lucu. Larinya. Kira lari ya. Oh lucu sekali. Ini pertama kali saya lihat seperti ini. Cari sendiri di ladang, ya? Oh makan papaya ya? Their mother she even came over and gave me a whole fresh papaya here. <laughs> It's super heavy. All right, back on the road, guys. Guys, we have made it. This is the entrance to North Kalimantan. There are 12 provinces on this channel. <laughs> Amazing. Riding into North Kalimantan, I had nothing but green scenery ahead of me. It's always an adventure sight when the skies come down to meet the hilltops. The roads weren't the best, but the view sure made up for it. Alright guys, I think we've made it for the stop today. Tanjung Selur. Wow, and the hornbill greeting us here. Nice. Oh, it's here, zero, 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 zero. That was close. Okay, check in Dulu. And that's gonna be it for today, guys. Oh my god. Oh. I then spent a few days in Tanjung Selor because I wanted to try and take a boat further north to the city of Tarakan. But this would turn out to be a bit more challenging than I had imagined. So guys, this afternoon I'm down by the river here in Tanjung Selor. I just wanted to fly a bit with a drone and Every day for lunchtime, I have come down here to walk just to get some fresh air and I've met the young guys over here that have been playing with their bikes. And I promised them that today I would bring Machan so they could see him as well. And safe to say they were impressed. Motor saya di mana? Situ. Motor keren atau gimana? Keren. Keren. Berapa cc? 890. Ah, <laughs> Nanti jangan lupa nonton ini di YouTube ya. <laughs> to be honest with you, I'm actually not really sure what to explore here in North Kalimantan because a lot of the things that I've seen in Kalimantan, they are very similar to the things I can find in North Kalimantan. So, yeah, I haven't really decided yet, but I have decided that we'll be going to Tanakan and we will take it from there. And And with my boat ride booked for the following afternoon, I went to bed, unaware of the surprise that I would be waking up to the following morning. So lama pagi guys. Uh, it is a Sunday morning here in Tanjung Selor, and this afternoon I had already planned that I was gonna load Machan onto the boat. But uh, yeah, 15 minutes ago, I get a message from the captain saying, oh yeah, uh, you have to load the motorcycle at eight o'clock, which is in yeah now five minutes because of the low tide. And then later in the afternoon, you can just come back here and we will go. That means I have to load Machan to a complete stranger now, many hours before departure. And uh, oh, I don't know how I feel about that, but He says it's something about the tide, so I have to go there. Otherwise, I'll risk they not being able to load much and in the afternoon. So, oh. <laughs> typical Indonesian, you know. Last minute, everything changes. But let's take much and let's go to the port and let's see how it looks like. Okay. Ah, this is the ship. How are we gonna get it down there? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay, I think this is the captain. Hello. Selamat pagi. 
Saya Chris, kita sudah teks ya. Salam kenal. Siapa namanya? Lemon. 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 Ah, seperti buah, lemon. Ah, jeruk. Bagus. So we're gonna see if we can get Machan down somewhere here, just in case you cannot see on the video. The drop here is about yeah, one and a half meter. We're gonna get it down on this boat, then on to the next boat, and then somehow get it in here where it will be most safe. Because the problem is once we arrive tomorrow in Tarakan, the air the um, the water will be low. So that's why he wants to put it in there, so it will be easier for us to get it up on the next ship and then unload it in Tarakan. Ah, satu lagi. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. <laughs> I'm just gonna let the guys load it and uh, have faith that they know what they're doing. Let's see how it goes. One of the many good things about Indonesia is that you'll never have a problem finding guys who isn't afraid of a bit of manual labor. Safe to say I was extremely nervous as Machan and the future of my journey was hanging in the balance between those two ships. And so, while wearing flip-flops and smoking, these 14 gentlemen had Machan loaded by hand in less than 10 minutes, something I doubt I would ever be able to see in the country that I'm from. All right, guys, Machan is successfully loaded, and uh, my friend Pa Jerry here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> he actually came to oversee it just to make sure that Machan is safe and everything is okay. So it's now nine o'clock, and I will come back here to the port again at four or five in the afternoon, and we will pray that Machan is still here by then. All right, guys, and we are back at the hotel. It is time to pack my stuff and get ready to go back to the port in the afternoon. So the reason why I'm taking this small boat to Tarakan is to position myself a little bit better for when it's time to go to Sulawesi, because unfortunately my Kalimantan series is coming to an end. So uh, the last stop I think will be Tarakan. We do have a few surprise elements to be done before I continue to Sulawesi. But uh, yeah, this is simply the easiest way to get to Tarakan here from Tanjung Salor. So let's pack up and let's go to Tarakan. All right, guys, we have made it onto the boat. So my good friend Jerry, he picked me up from the hotel and we have now boarded. I have brought all my many things on board. Much and is safely parked. We have the beautiful view now over the river. And now we're just waiting for the water to rise so that we can go toward Tarakan. It is now 5.15, it's gonna be a long night, but uh, yeah, hopefully we will safely arrive at Tarakan tomorrow. All right guys, it is now 6.30, so uh, the loading is take quite a while, but it's also very difficult process looking at how they get it over here on the boat. Look at this, it is no easy job to do that. And it's all brand new cars from Toyota. They have a contract with Toyota bringing them to Tarakan. So they definitely don't want to drop one in the water. I'm just hoping the water will be good. So we arrive not too late in Tarakan because I have a feeling it's going to be a long night. At seven o'clock, we could finally depart from Tanjung Silor. And as I enjoyed the sunset, from the hammock. I thought, well, this is going to be a smooth sailing. Some of the staff were already preparing our dinner, vegetables and a solid chicken soup, while others were showering on the deck. But as we started getting closer to the ocean, it would so happen to be that we would be sailing right into the worst thunderstorm I have ever experienced. Okay, guys, this is gonna be terrible, terrible quality. I'm just filming my face with my iPhone. I have barricaded myself in a corner here inside of the boat and uh, rain is coming in everywhere. Yep. 
The captain then asked me to turn off my screen, because the rain in front of us was so heavy that the only thing that lit up his path was the lightning that struck with just a few seconds interval. And with windows that couldn't close, the rain came pouring in all night. Hi you guys, it is now 6 o'clock in the morning and we have made it to Tarakan port. It has been a very long night. So I wasn't able to film a lot because it was raining so heavy and there was massive thunder. And um, so it was almost impossible for the captain to look out the windows. So we could not turn on any lights, not even the light from our cell phones. But anyway, the, the weather was so rough that we had to make a stop for a couple of hours during the night. Then I woke up again at 3 o'clock this morning when we were crossing the seaport. And I could just feel like, gong, 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 as we hit the waves. <laughs> and in pitch black darkness, it was quite scary, but we made it. We are now here at... Tarakan. I did get rather nervous as we approached Tarakan port and I could see a bunch of uniformed men all pointing at me as we got closer. But as always, I had nothing to worry about because my good buddy Jerry from Tanjung Selor had sent his military buddies to help make sure I arrived safely in Tarakan. Thank you so much, Jerry. But the water was now even lower, so I was still a bit nervous, but also happy that I had the extra help that morning. This is so interesting and so nerve-wracking to see at the same time. Anywhere else in the world, people would have said, ah, you have to wait, this is not possible. But in Indonesia, it's like, yeah, visa, visa. Bagus guys. Mantap guys. Terima kasih. Eh, kali kita kau. Kamu dah. Kamu dah. Eh, kali. Eh, kali. Warna ga? Warna ga? Warna ga? Warna ga? Terima kasih. Time to go to the hotel, get some rest, and the kind guys here, Jerry's friends, they've offered to escort me. So let's go. What a fine welcome here to Tarakan. Terima kasih banyak, guys. And that's it. I made it here to the room. It looks very nice, decent. So now I want to unpack. I definitely want to get some rest, maybe some breakfast. And uh, then I will cue you guys in on my secret plan. Actually, I'm not going to cue you in, but I can tell you this much. We are going on a lot of different flights to meet some people that I promised I would meet again. So let's get ready for that. Let's go. Okay, and we are on to the next flight. Let's go. Alright guys, last flight. Let's do this. Alright guys, so we have finally made it after three long flights. Some of you guys might already know where I am. I'm not going to show you just yet, but I can tell you <laughs> it feels like home. So now I'm going to get in the car and we're going to go the last two hours and we will finally arrive.
I had found my way back home to Sunga Utik in West Kalimantan. I had previously stayed here during the first months of my Kalimantan tour and it quickly became one of the best memories of my life. So it was a matter of time before I found my way back here again. And this time I had brought some ole ole from none other than the Danish embassy in Jakarta because they had really enjoyed learning about the Dayak culture through my first video from here. So they wanted to show their appreciation by giving a bit of Danish culture to Sunga Utik. And the Danish Lego was popular because with that it was even possible to build an Apai Simon who sits in the top of his tree drinking tuak. It felt good seeing all of the kids again and it warmed my heart as they told me about the many times they had sat in our usual Wi-Fi spot in the afternoons watching my videos. And one thing that I had probably missed the most was this. Just all of us being together. And I had a feeling that they felt the same way. And it was then time for a bit of nongkrong in the Ruai where it was amazing to see that everyone was still doing activities together and having fun as one big family. <laughs> and it wouldn't be a proper first night back at Sunga Utik without a couple of glasses of tuak sitting on the wooden mats and sharing some of my travel stories with the elders. And we did end up sitting in front of the Bilix here in the Ruai drinking Tuak, the traditional alcohol now until nine o'clock. And safe to say after a good five glasses I am <laughs> oh, well, what a lovely evening it has been just sitting, talking about the history here, the people. It's been luar biasa. Selamat pagi, guys. Yes, it is correct. I'm back here at Sungai Utik. So I decided that before I end my Kalimantan series that I would come back here. I did promise them that I would come back again for making my second Bunga Terong. And if you don't know what Sunga Utig is, it is a small village in Western Kalimantan. It is a home for the indigenous people of Kalimantan, the Dayak Iban, and they have lived here for hundreds of years. Today, there's almost 300 people living here in the many billiks along the long house. Yeah, if you haven't watched my first video from Sungai Utik, then you should definitely go back and watch it. It will be more in-depth about the life here. And I can tell now that during my Kalimantan journey, I've seen a lot of long houses, but it is truly difficult to find one as unique as here, because here, they're still all living together, all working together, as one big family. But the many long houses I've seen in Kalteng, Kalsel, Kaltim, Kalimantan Utara, there's not even people living in those long houses anymore. But I'm gonna bring you guys along and try to give you some insight into what I do when I come back home to Sunga Utik. Selamat pagi, Fidel. Selamat pagi, Nini. Selamat pagi, Mo Bella. Ya, pagi, Nini. For this visit, I had decided I would focus my time more on being present and catching up with everyone and less time making video, as it would be a while before I would get to see them again. 
masih mau jadi jadi bulu ya sudah ada rambut putih ya mirip kan it felt good being back around this abundance of nature and culture and this time they were preparing their rice fields so we went into the forest to see how that looked like i've almost forgot just how peaceful it is here we are now walking past all their many fields and <laughs> i remember this is such a small part of sumerutik they have 10 thousand hectares of land it's so relaxing i mean listen to this that is all i can hear i really do want to bring my family here someday so they can see it as well so we're making a small stop here at inaya napais aladang and it is now around 9 30 and they are already in process of chopping down a lot of the grass, of the bushes, the trees, because this is actually a rice field. They just haven't used it in five years. So you can see on this side, they have already chopped down a lot of it. It's taken around, yeah, two weeks. And you can see on the other side, that's how it looks like the rest of the field. And they have an entire hectare that looks like this, that they have to chop down manually using these small machetes and they estimate that they will probably be chopping down for another two to three months then once all of that is chopped down they will burn off the field and then it's time to plant the rice you know with the sticks like we saw in desert yuhu it requires a lot of patience a lot of sweat and a lot of hard work as it's rather hot working in long pants and long sleeves under the sun Apai Jamet and Inai Jamet have what's called a pondok next to their field. They use this for shelter during midday, but they can take a rest from the sun or the rain. And as it's right out in the fields, I did notice that the spiders like to take shelter here as well. And as per Iban tradition, I had to pour a bit of tuak between the cracks of the floor and say a prayer for the pondog and the family. So we spend a couple of hours in the warm and smoke-filled pondog, drinking coffee and tuak as I shared some stories from the road. <laughs> We then went back to the longhouse, where I could once again enjoy a very acceptable midday activity, laying on the floor tiles as they stay cold and they make an excellent spot for a nap. Siapa mau ikut saya ke sungai? It is afternoon here at Sungai Utik and the kids, they know what time it is. It is time to go to the river once again. Hi guys! Siap! 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 Oh, it is good to be back. It was actually the first thing the kids, they asked me this morning. It was, when are we gonna go to the river? When are we going swimming? And now it is 3.30 and the entire crew is here with me. <laughs> this time they're bringing soap from a leaf. I haven't tried that before. Sabun aras. Aras. Itu dari pohon? Bukan dari daun. Oh, dari daun. Oh, hello, cantik. Okay. Wow, it actually smells really good. It smells like green tea, actually. Kind of like a natural scrub. I'm 
guessing it's good for your skin. At least I hope so. As the rainbow graced us with its presence, the sun slowly set over the mountains and Sunga Utik. As it was the holidays, Sunga Utik was busier than ever, with all the kids coming home for Pulang Kampung. So guys, tonight is actually a special evening, because besides that all the kids are back from school, then the entire family has come back as well, from Putusibao, from Pontianak, because tomorrow is gonna be the 100th day since one of the Nenex here passed, a member of the Tegara family here in Pilik One. So they're kind of like, yeah, ending their long grieving period. So they're all coming together to eat together and yeah, just be together, family time. So tonight we're having dinner, a lot of people together in Bilig One. So. Yeah, it's nice that I can be here on these special family days and I can really feel that they consider me more and more family the longer I stay here. It feels really nice. So, let's go in and as we say in Pasaiban, Makai. Good. <laughs> so every evening I come out here to the Luai and check what's going on and tonight they have cultural school so the kids they are learning how to make baskets and how to make mats so their culture teacher is learning them how to make these mats like their ancestors did back in the time so it's a reoccurring thing the elders they teach the traditions the culture to the kids so later the kids they can teach their kids so the culture remains. And this is why Sungai Utik is going to be here for many years to come because they keep carrying that tradition with them to the next generation. Selamat pagi guys This morning the weather is actually not that good It's very cloudy It's even raining a little bit still I just wanted to go and check on the guys here in the morning They go to the construction site for building the new church To see how, uh, how the process is going And later today I will be making my I will be making my tattoo Because tomorrow it is time to go back to Tarakan. Since the last time I was here, they have started building a church. So I was curious to hear and see how they would make that possible in this small community. This is the second part of uh, the, the, the design of the Daya Iban that we use for the, our building. The first is cultural house. It's more uh, about recovering the memorize when the elder uh, sharing their knowledge about how to build a long house uh, and it's in uh, bring back the memories at the other side this is a transfer knowledge and after the cultural house we start to building uh, the church but uh, this church is really special because this is used uh, 
Daya Iban traditional architecture and it mixes with the modern design because this is more about talking about future. If the cultural house is about uh, bring the memory, but the church is more about how we uh, prepare the building for the future. So the young generation can feel close with the ethnic and cultural design. How it works, so all the community sitting together and then decide the schedule and it's all managed by community. Uh, some worker, uh, they come from outside and transport the knowledge because this is mixed between the modern building and traditional building. So the foundation will use the cement and the modern material. It came from outside, but the, the floor until the top, this is uh, traditional. So we use the wood from our forest because we still have uh, the best wood that we have and we want to build it and use it for the church so it can be a legacy from this generation to the next generation. The, the biggest part of this cultural house will be built by the community together. Why it takes around two years? Because yeah, we still doing our daily activity and in the middle of that we will uh, finish this church. It was almost time to say goodbye to Sungai Utik once again. But I thought it could be interesting to sit down with Tina in the Ruai and hear what kind of effect my last video had had on Sungai Utik. Yeah, first congratulations because hit uh, more than one million view is not something easy, especially because your video is something different. Inside your video, there's a knowledge uh, listen, and this is the deep story of the Daya Iban life. I'm so happy because um, our small project, so uh, we can share the story. And this side of story is not something that um, many people want to uh, dig in. At the moment, uh, we have like funeral or the morning, and uh, we're really thankful because after that many people give a good appreciation because uh, you bring um, many viewers to see the different side of uh, Daya Iban life. As you know, there's many stigma about Daya and uh, you open the different side about the humanity, the simple lifestyle and um, you can feel now you come back uh, to this long house with the feeling that you are a part of family. So you're not just a visitor or tourist, but now you be a family. I show it first to the kids, and they're really happy. And they said that they miss you because you promised to come back. And when you arrive, you can see that they're really excited. And almost these three days, you go together with your gangs, playing, uh, swimming, and everything. And um, thank you because um, it gives the pride. They can see like their daily life is something amazing because they can read that many uh, feedback from uh, your viewers. Some of the elder because I shared the link. They feel like, wow, I'll be a big star right now. <laughs> and just make fun like this. And they said, um, well, thank you, Chris, because um, this is a daily life, but why many people want to see our daily life? This is just a something simple. And um, they feel like, uh, why if we watch it, it looks like so special. Then they realize that they have like a privilege living it together at the longhouse. They have a best river. Many people came here and said that they know Sungai Utik from your video. They're not just came to take selfie, but they want to know more about it. Thank you for watching uh, the video about Sungai Utik. Uh, without you all guys, the video will never uh, hit this more than 1 million viewers in 6 months. Thank you for sharing it with your family, your friend, and everybody want to learn more about the Daya Iban community. If you have time, you can come and visit us at Sungai Utik Longhouse. Thank you for watching. Luar biasa.
And that is going to be it for this episode, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed coming back here to Sungai Utsik with me. And now I'm leaving with my second Bunga Terong and another memory for life. I've become so much closer with the people here. Their reaction when I came back and these days I've been staying with them, it's, uh, it's truly priceless. And they feel more and more like a family whenever I come back. And if you're someone out there watching who might be working in the government or the Bupati's office, I don't know, have some kind of influence, don't forget to both protect and support the indigenous people of Indonesia. They are truly special and so important for Indonesia. Without them, Indonesia wouldn't be the same. So please, do whatever you can to protect them. I will gladly help in any way I can. They are simply loving and kind Indonesian people who just wants to live their life in their way, on their terms. Please let them do that. And now it's time for me to head back to Tarakan and end my Kalimantan series because it is time to go to Sulawesi. Terima kasih ya. See you next time. And just like that guys, I am back in Tarakan in North Kalimantan again because it is time to finish the Kalimantan series. Thank you so much guys for watching the episodes as we started in Pontianak. Yeah, in September last year, I've been now in Kalimantan for nine months and it has been an incredible ride. And it is now time to continue to the third season of the Sabang Sama Maraka journey. It's time to go to Makassar. So let's head downstairs and put Machan on the truck. All right, I have now dropped Machan in a very small side street here next to the hotel because here is where Suturai's vendor is. So now they're gonna wrap Machan in first plastic and tape and all sort of things to make sure that he arrives safely and not scratched in Makassar. And for this transport, I've put two of my side bags on from Enduristan. I've put the top box from Shad on the back simply to fit as much as I could on this transport so I don't have to bring it on the plane. And later Machen is gonna be picked up with the truck and then once it's inside the truck, it's not gonna leave it again until it arrives in Makassar because the truck is just gonna drive onto the ferry and then uh, yeah, take it all the way. So fingers crossed guys and yeah, Machen, be safe. Thank you so much for watching guys. I will see you in the next one and until next time. Tada guys. And as always my friends, Stay tuned for the next one, as my Sabang to Morocco journey leads me to Makassar and I explore the breathtaking landscape and culture of South Sulawesi.